Welcome to Senogenics Carolina's Live, Kick Heart Disease. On the line, we have Dr. Mickey Barber, Age Management Specialist and CEO, CMO of Senogenics Carolinas, as well as Tiffany Jackson, Senogenics Carolinas Nutrition Specialist. Please stay tuned to ask your questions of Dr. Mickey Barber and Tiffany Jackson after their presentation. So good morning or good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to our February webinar. It is Heart Month, so we're going to take some time to remind our patients that heart disease is the most common cause of death here in America. As you can see from the heart facts that were on the previous slide, this is one topic that deserves a lot of attention. Sadly, heart disease has become a national crisis in this country, and with more than 2 million heart attacks and strokes a year, over 800,000 deaths, just about all of us have been touched by someone who's had a heart attack um, or a stroke or suffers from heart disease. So uh, tonight we're going to go through that. Um, first I'm going to touch on uh, coronary artery disease uh, because it's the most common form of heart disease. The coronary arteries, as you can see from this slide, um, are the life-sustaining arteries that bring oxygen to the heart muscle. So if plaque uh, buildup or a plaque rupture or a clot blocks these coronary arteries, the heart does not get enough oxygen and is unable to function properly. So this is what you know, can result into a heart attack and cause an arrhythmia. Um, and traditionally, the risk of developing coronary artery disease has been assessed you know, with LDL and HDL cholesterol measurements. But this evening, you're going to learn that today's uh, routine cholesterol test along with the other you know, calcium score testing um, for some of these heart diseases are failing to identify uh, the people that are at risk for heart disease. So Synagenics Carolinas has launched a new comprehensive heart and stroke prevention program, and tonight we are excited to have Dr. Barber on to give us all the details. So welcome, Dr. Barber. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you very much. And I'm really, really excited to have the opportunity to share this with um, patients and people that aren't our patients yet for a lot of reasons. And, and one reason is, you know, as Tiffany said, and it's kind of shocking, but heart disease and heart attacks still remain the number one cause of death in this country. And, and that means over the past couple of decades, we've made absolutely no progress. And what's really kind of shocking about that is that the use of statin medications like Lipitor and Crestor, et cetera, have, are actually on the rise and still aren't making a dent in the number one cause of death. So, you know, obviously we're not doing something right. And if you look at that slide up there, what I think is really interesting that um, is worth paying attention to is that 77% of people that have heart attacks have normal cholesterol. So obviously we're missing out on one very, very important part of the puzzle. And really one of the great mysteries about cardiology and heart disease is the fact that 50% of people with coronary artery disease have blood cholesterol levels that are similar to people that don't ever get the disease. So again, somehow we are not educating or learning about the risk for many of us of, of developing heart disease and how to take the appropriate preventative action. And I wanted to talk to, about this a bit from a personal um, level. Uh, Tiffany mentioned most of us have experienced friends or family or patients that have had heart disease or heart attacks. For me personally, the reason I got interested in Cenogenics to begin with was because of my strong family history of heart disease. My, brother at, my father had his first heart attack at 41. My younger brother had his first heart attack at 43. My father had five heart attacks and three heart surgeries before he died in his 70s. And really the last three or four years of his life were just horrible because of um, constant chest pain. My younger brother passed away last year from a heart attack while watching a baseball game on TV. So this was a real personal thing for me. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't go down that same route. And, and for many years, my practice in Cenogenics has been focused on really that preventative aspect. When I first started my practice 10 years ago, I had another experience that really, really brought to light how we were really just scratching the surface of heart disease prevention. I had a, a female who came to see me who was in her early 40s. She uh, was looked very fit. She was thin. She was a non-smoker. She worked out. She thought she was doing all the right things, but she had ignored some signs of heart disease as well as some lab tests or cholesterol for several years. And not only she had ignored them, but her physicians. 
Um, she had been on my program about three to four weeks. She called me saying she was having some weird feelings in her chest. I had her go to a physician, an ER actually, to have an EKG. The EKG was red as normal. In retrospect, when I saw the EKG, it was not normal. I had suggested at that time that when she went to the ER that she had an echocardiogram, which was not done. The short story is she had a heart attack, Tiffany, on uh, her treadmill. And um, the call I got was from her husband, who had found her dead on the treadmill. So it just got, really got me. And I really want to, to really stress in this webinar that we really have just scratched the surface on disease prevention for heart disease. And I think what we have to offer is going to take this silent killer and prevention to a whole new level. So I'm excited to be talking about this new program. Yeah, that's great. We're, I know we're all excited here. We've been going through all the different trainings. And it's just exciting finally now to be able to share all the information that we've learned with all of our patients and everyone out there that's listening. So um, I know, especially since you were just talking about um, that one patient, but you, we've always talked how uh, it's a vitally important message, you know, especially for women. It's something that's just not talked about a lot um, in the medical community that, you know, more women die of heart disease than all forms of cancer combined. So uh -huh. I know uh -huh. you wanted to touch on that uh, some here. So. Yeah, I, I really did. I mean, this is yesterday was Valentine's Day, and I know a lot of men out there, you know, bought jewelry and flowers for their significant females. Um, but you know, what you really ought to do for them is talk to them about how they can do things to prevent heart heart disease. Because the problem with heart disease in women, in that in that most of the time it is misdiagnosed, many times it is treated incorrectly, and if women have heart disease or have a heart attack, they are um, more likely to die within the first year than men of having a heart attack. Women also are two to three times more likely to die after heart bypass surgery. So um, if, if we get heart disease as females, we're more likely to, to not survive. Um, when women go to the emergency room with a heart attack, their presenting symptoms are different than men. We don't get chest pain. We tend to have fatigue, debilitating fatigue that presents itself up to a month before a heart attack. We can have uh, sleep disturbances, shortness of breath, uh, upper epigastric or upper GI pain that sometimes is described as indigestion. And many times we get sent home with a diagnosis of indigestion or anxiety. So um, I'm really focused on getting that word out there for women in particular, not that I'm ignoring the men, but I think it's been talked about a lot more um, in men than in women. Yeah, I'm really glad that uh, you mentioned that. So fortunately, uh, the prevention of heart disease is taking a big step forward here at Cynogenics for, for both the men and women. So go ahead and give us an overview of what our new heart disease and stroke prevention program entails. Uh, definitely. And um, just, this is a chart that we've uh, put together to kind of compare what most of us are used to in a conventional medical office for assessing um, heart disease risk. And um, usually what we look at is just our lipid panel or our cholesterol panel. What, well, we've known, many of us, that there was more to the story than that. So we're excited that we have partnered with Panasonic Health Group of North America. Berkeley Heart Lab and Cleveland Heart Lab to offer a comprehensive heart disease and stroke prevention program. It, it includes the latest technology ultrasound to look at the carotid, artery, intimal, and medial layer thicknesses, or CIMT, which I'll talk about later. This allows us to detect early signs of cardiovascular disease and carotid disease. Also, the program includes screening blood and urine for genetic markers, three genetic markers, five inflammatory markers, and an advanced lipid panel with 12 areas that are measured, as opposed to just the, the total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides that we're all used to looking at. If we know that most people that have a heart attack have normal cholesterol, obviously we've been missing something there. So if you look at this slide, you can see what, what is assessed in a conventional medical office and what we're looking at um, with the Cenogenics Heart Disease and Stroke Prevention Program. Uh, this is going to allow us to target specific areas um, and need and really personalize our approach um, when searching for arterial plaques and what we can do to de decrease the risk of a heart attack and stroke. So people are kind of used to coming to Cenogenics to help improve their energy or lose weight or look better or feel
feel better, improve their sex life, and all that's important. But on top of that, we've known our program has helped to decrease the incidence of heart disease, but this gives us even more specific information. And the other thing to note too, Tiffany, is that this program is available for our patients, but it's also available for people that are not our patients. So that's the other exciting thing. Yeah, that is. I mean, it really is the ultimate program for preventing heart disease. Uh, so go ahead and explain to our listeners, you know, um, atherosclerosis and cholesterol and what we really need to be concerned, to get, uh, concerned about when talking about uh, preventing heart disease. Okay, okay. Well, we have some nice pictures up here, I think. And, and the first picture to look at is the normal artery, which is this very top artery. And this is what the inside of a normal artery should look like. It's smooth, it's unobstructed, and it permits blood, blood to flow very easily through it. Well, there's an early stage, which we've not really been able to pick up before. And, and this is dependent on genetic makeup or lifestyle factors that may increase cholesterol circulating in your bloodstream. And this excess cholesterol then enters a damaged arterial wall. And why is it damaged? Well, there may be some inflammation that has occurred, which then will initiate the cholesterol accumulating and building up in the wall of this vessel. So that's the early stage. Well, then if you look down at the intermediate, you can see things are starting to happen a little more. A little more time has gone on, and more and more cholesterol has accumulated, causing plaque to build up to push the arterial wall out like a balloon. So now you've got less space in the lumen and things are starting to look a little more abnormal. Then the late stage is really where there's just too much cholesterol accumulation and then the plaque causes the artery wall to thin, it makes it unstable and prone to rupture. And then last is where eventually the artery wall will rupture and release its contents into the bloodstream. This obviously is where we have uh, clotting of the blood and that results in a heart attack or stroke. So obviously that's not what we want to happen. So I want to talk a little bit about cholesterol. Everybody, you know, it's, it's a word that's tossed around at cocktail parties and over dinner and everywhere, but not sure a lot of us understand it. But cholesterol is a lipid or a fat that functions as a precursor. It's a normal thing that you want in your body. It helps to make hormones. So. Um, for those of you that are patients, sometimes we say, you know, your testosterone is so low that, or your cholesterol, excuse me, is so low uh, because of the medications you're taking that you can't even make hormones. So it's important to have, and it also helps you to absorb fat-soluble vitamins. It's critically important for building and maintaining cell membranes. It's also important to protect injuries of the, the arterial wall. The low density, or LDL, low-density lipoprotein transports the cholesterol into the cell. So if you look at that picture there, um, you can see that that LDL is transporting the cholesterol to the cell, where the HDL, or the good cholesterol, high-density lipoprotein transports the cholesterol away from the cell. So you can see that there on the picture. Now, when someone has an excess of LDL, too much cholesterol can be deposited into the wall of the artery. Insufficient HDL, which is trans supposed to transport it out, will impair that cholesterol transport away from the arterial wall where it would be normally um, disposed of by the liver. So too much LDL or not enough and or not enough HDL can really set up the stage for atherosclerosis. But these are pretty simple facts. Again, this is like, you know, the, the last century old school way of looking at this and there's really only one part of the problem. The big problem now we know is in the oxidized LDL. So once that LDL becomes oxidized, the LDL particles react with free radicals and then it becomes much more reactive with the tissues. Now not only does it cause the, the cholesterol to deposit, but it starts to cause tissue damage of the arterial wall. So some of the things that appear to increase levels of oxidized LDL are consuming a diet that is high in trans fats, smoking, poorly controlled diabetes, or metabolic syndrome. Many, many, many thousands, really, of studies now reveal how oxidized LDL contributes to the atherosclerotic process from start to finish. So the big picture is really the oxidized LDL causes injury to the endothelial cells call, causing atherosclerosis and causing inflammation. And how have we been looking at that in the past? We really haven't. 
Yeah, I just think that that is one huge piece of the puzzle with cholesterol that most people don't understand and understanding it being oxidized and what causes that oxidation and how their poor diet, you know, is also causing the inflammation and how it really is a is a full circle. So, you know, when patients come in and we're able to teach them this stuff and it, it just makes such a huge difference down the road and, you know, why we test for inflammation and, mm -hmm. you know, being able to teach them why and how uh, we can prevent so many things. So go ahead and uh, explain, since we've been talking about inflammatory markers, you know, how that is incorporated and what you're looking at um, when it comes to inflammatory markers as part of this program. Yeah, okay. All right, let's look at this slide first. We have two slides about inflammation, and I'm not going to go into a lot of the chemistry. You know, we have questions. Uh, uh, we'll have questions available afterwards, and we can talk about it. But with the, what, what happened was we, we really reached out to different labs throughout the country because we wanted to find several labs that looked at all these different markers. And Cleveland Heart Labs really, really was had, had really put the bar up there for us. And Senogenics has established a profile along with Cleveland Heart Labs that looks at biomarkers that measure both oxidation and inflammation in order to better define those individuals at risk and to determine where they are on the spectrum of risk and then what we can do about it. So there are really five simple um, tests to look at and what we'll be able to determine is, is are we early in the disease process and maybe will this person have disease? Do they have disease, but it's not really progressing? Or do they have disease that is actively progressing and putting them at more immediate risk for heart attack or stroke? So here are the five that we're looking at. And I'm, I'm really just going to go through these from the slide. And then we're going to show you a little picture that maybe will help a little bit. The first is myeloperoxidase, or MPO, which is, a, again, a, an independent predictor of cardiovascular disease. The second is. F2 isoproteins, and these are considered essential markers for lifestyle. So this is important because this can tell us what kinds of things can we do through diet and exercise that can help to keep these inflammatory markers, these F2 isoproteins, in check. The next thing is looking at the microalbumin and creatinine ratio, and this is in the urine. Really exciting. This is really a marker for microvascular integrity and endothelial dysfunction. So this is telling us, hey, we have a problem going on right now. The next thing is LP, PLA2, which is called the plaque test. It's a very specific marker for vascular inflammation. Um, it tells us whether we have um, atherosclerosis being caused by oxidation of the LDL in the intima or that internal layer of the artery. And then the last is high sensitivity, high sensitivity C-reactive protein or CRP. Uh, this we know, and we've been measuring this one for a while actually, is associated with an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. Um, its elevation is critical if it's associated with other
Parkinson. It seems to, the visual can put it into a thousand words, you know? Right, um, exactly. So what are the important markers for the uh, advanced lipids profile? Well, this is what I think is really exciting, Tiffany, because you know those of us who have been practicing medicine for a while know that when we are just looking at total cholesterol, LDL, and HDL, that that was only part of the story, really just scratching the surface. And we really knew that there was something about the quality of those particles that was very important. So there are several things, and there are two slides here that, that are going to um, speak to what we're looking at. And again, I'm not going to go into all the chemistry, but the first is looking at the types of LDL par particles that we have. And there are several different layers, one, two, three, and four. And if we find in this particular test that your LDL three and four particles are elevated, you have a three times greater risk of heart disease. Well, then we can say, OK, the thing you need now are fibrates or statins or niacin. To, that's the only way to take care of those particles. But on the other hand, if those particles are fine, maybe you don't need those things. Um, then we looked at the HDL. I mean, you know, we've been looking at HDLs for years and, and realizing they don't move very much. Well, what we really need to know is what's the percentage of HDL2B particles? Because these HDL2B particles are associated with a two- or three-fold increased risk of heart disease and progression of atherosclerosis. And guess what? These HDL particles do not respond well to statins. They do respond to other things, uh, aerobic exercise, niacins, and other things, but not so much to, to statins. So um, this gives us a lot of personalized information. On the next slide, um, there are a couple of other uh, advanced uh, lipid numbers that we would be looking at would be the APOB. Um, this has been accepted as a really important uh, uh, measurement of LDL particles. Um, looking at this number tells us a lot about diet. This um, particle responds well to low glycemic and low fat diet. LP little a is the next one. Um, this is an LDL particle that's associated with atherosclerosis at all levels. Here's the deal. Statins and lifestyle changes do not affect this number. But I have seen incredible effect from high doses of niacin and omega-3 fatty acids in lowering this level. This can be life-changing for people and life-saving. Yeah, that is very exciting. Um, so, And also, I mean, the genetic markers, too. So this gets even more comprehensive. So now we take it to another level, looking at the genetic markers from uh, Berkeley Heart Lab. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this is really cool. I mean, I'm, I'm personally, I just had my testing done. I'm, I'm, I'm really waiting to see the results. I'm excited to see for me personally. But the first one is called KIF-6. And a positive KIF-6 um, signifies an increased risk of coronary heart, uh, heart disease and can be affected. People with that genetic marker can be, um, their risk can be decreased by statin medication. Um, the 9P21 genotype, very important for increased risk of early MI. And we know that knowing that number, that we can really focus in on diet and exercise and help to reduce their risk. And then the last genetic marker is the APOE. Um, if you are an APOE positive, excuse me, APOE4 positive, this means that you cannot handle fat. You are somebody that should be on an extremely low fat diet. These are like those vegan people that, you know, this is somebody that needs to be on that kind of a diet. So, um, you know, it's not for everybody. And so this has given us specific information. Yeah. Um, so taking it even another step forward, uh, now we begin to do some imaging of the carotid artery. So I know that's our new uh, exciting machine that we have here in the office. So tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were approached by uh, Panasonic Health Systems of North America. Um, we had actually been looking for several years, and I've been involved in a project looking at ways of uh, evaluating carotid intima media thickening, which is CIMT. And Panasonic really has the best system out there. It's called the Heart Cardio Health Station. It's, it's, um, it's been FDA approved. It's non-invasive. It's something we do in the office. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes. It will scan your carotid arteries, both sides, for plaque. So first of all, we'll know your risk of stroke from plaque and help to determine your cardiovascular uh, risk. 
Um, there's no radiation involved. It's actually been shown to be more predictive than calcium scoring, and it does not expose you to radiation like a calcium scoring test does. So what it does, we're looking at two things there, Tiffany. One is an increased thickness of the CIMT, and the second is visible carotid plaque. So on the next slide, you can see what that report would look like after you have that CIMT done. And the reason I like this slide, if you look at the, the top portion there with the little pyramid, that colored one, that is the, called the Framingham risk, which is the conventional way of looking at your risk of heart disease. Just really looking at family history. Are you a smoker? What's your cholesterol? What's your blood pressure? It's really not all that predictive. Then if you go down to the next, um, area of that printout, that is what our printout looks, at, looks like from a CIMT. And that's going to tell you really what's your vascular age and what's your risk of heart disease for you and comparing you to people that don't have heart disease and what is their um, carotid intimal thickness. So um, a much better predictor of risk because it's specific um, to you. So. Uh, pretty exciting. I mean, you know, we, we don't want to have advanced vascular age. You want to have a, a young vessel. And when you put that information then on with the other advanced lipid testing genetics and inflammatory markers, you've got a, a great picture. Yeah, I, uh, I've just found it amazing because, you know, we've been having a lot of people come in the office lately to get these done. And, you know, some people that you wouldn't expect to have any, you know, pre-stages of heart disease. These are some younger professionals that are also, you know, work around us. And, you know, we're, I'm extremely surprised by some of the results because they do have the increased CIMT and they're showing the thickening greater um, than the 1.2. And it just, you know, I mean, it's an eye opener. I know we've surprised a lot of people around our office and made people become a lot more aware um, because it just, it, it's so, it is just really, it's, when you see that from the ultrasound, you can't deny what's on the screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Well, and you know what else is exciting about it, Tiffany, is that when people come back year after year to see us, of course we're looking at their body fat, of course we're looking at their blood pressure, of course we're looking at their fitness level, and we've been looking at their cholesterol panels. And, you know, once they're good, they're good, and that's kind of it. Well, the CIMT, what we want to do is we'll have that baseline measurement, and then every year we either want that to stay the same or to get better. And so it gives us one more data point um, to assess as far as, uh, you know, health risk is concerned. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I think from everything that you've just gone over, I hope all of our listeners have a good understanding that, you know, we can start beating health disease. It's here. It's right at our fingertips, and it's just a matter of, you know, getting all of the different analyses done to see, you know, what's going on uh, with their with their bodies. So I'm sure some of our listeners out there are wondering what they need to do, you know, if they're interested in our full comprehensive program or if they just want to do the heart um, and stroke uh, stroke prevention part of it. So maybe if you can just go into a little bit of detail about that. Sure, sure. Well, I think the best thing would be um, either to call our office tomorrow morning, and the number is up here, or to email uh, uh, me. Uh, you can email me. It's mbarber at senogenicscarolinas.com. Um, and, and find out exactly if this is a good thing for you to do. And that means if you're a patient or not a patient. Um, and then we would, if you decide to have this particular evaluation done, we would set you up for a phlebotomist to come to your home to collect the blood and urine. Uh, we would schedule a time for you to come to our office and have the CIMT performed and then to sit down for a consultation. Uh, to discuss all of that information and then come up with a real plan for you. So, um, uh, you know, we, we're going to open it up for questions in a few minutes, but certainly, you know, I, I hope that you're all excited about this and that you want to talk some more about it. Yeah, well, thank you so much uh, for taking the time and, you know, putting this together so you can educate more people out there about uh, the new and updated uh, research and programs that are available. So we hope that it was helpful for people out there and that you have a better understanding on how you really can prevent heart disease. And since, you know, it is the month of February, no matter what your plans are for the month, just be sure to take care of your heart and uh, 
especially, you know, it's a great gift for somebody that you love, um, being that it's, it's February. So anyway, uh, if somebody wants to ask a question, I will turn it over to Lindsay, and she will show you how. So thanks again, Dr. Barber. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Barber. Tiffany and Dr. Barber will now be accepting questions from the audience. If you would like to ask a question, please use the chat feature located on the meeting dashboard or by raising your hand, also located on the meeting dashboard. If you choose to raise your hand, your line will be unmuted and you will be able to ask your question live. I see that we already have one question um, from someone in the audience. Oh, I guess the question, I guess they took it away. Is there any other questions in the audience? I know we covered a lot of material. I'm hoping that someone would like um, just a couple of things answered. I mean, we'll be happy to answer whatever you'd like. Don't be shy. You can type your questions in. Anyone else? All right, well, I guess at this time there doesn't seem to be any questions, but if you change your mind, please feel free to um, call us tomorrow. Uh, for more information or if you have any questions, feel free to contact Dr. Mickey Barber directly at 843-577-8484 or email her at mbarber at senogenics-carolinas.com. You can also register online at www.senogenicscarolinas.com. Senogenics Carolinas is open Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Again, you can reach Dr. Mickey Barber directly at 843-577-8484. Email her at mbarber at senogenics-carolinas.com or register online at www.senogenicscarolinas.com. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.